Join us now on one of the hearing's key uh, witnesses, Matt Pottinger. He's a Hoover Institution uh, distinguished uh, visiting fellow, former deputy national security advisor in the Trump administration. We try to, to frame everything from, from the angle of, of U.S. companies, Matt, and I don't know. It all seems diametrically opposed to, to what our corporate interests are there. It'd be nice to just look the other way on everything and keep selling a bunch of sneakers or, or, um, <laughs> or Starbucks. Can we no longer do that in, in good conscience? Well, it's a good question. I, it's great to be with you this morning. I, I, I think we should first credit, uh, I guess, China's supreme leader, Xi Jinping, for doing what no one else uh, could have done, which is to bring Democrats and Republicans together uh, in that uh, consensus, bipartisan sort of chorus of voices that you heard uh, last night. You just showed a clip of Congresswoman Cheryl. Uh, uh, you know, I, I heard a lot of uh, warning signs and red flags for American business last night coming from Democrats and Republicans. Uh, it sounds to me like they're uh, exploring ways to start restricting outbound investment uh, into Chinese companies that are involved in human rights violations or that are helping uh, uh, China's uh, military modernization. Matt, what, it seems like we have a, a symbiotic relationship with China to some extent. So what's their game plan? I, I mean, they must know, uh, the, the CCP must know that they can push this too far to where, you know, it's going to hurt global trade. It's, uh, you know, they live on exports. We live on Chinese imports. All this is at risk if it becomes clear that all they're really interested in is, is global domination, and that's what we're saying. That's what Glenn Youngkin, the, the Virginia governor, was just on. That's what we're sort of saying, that they want to be, they want to, I think, dominate the world at our expense. Well, I, I think if you look at uh, Xi Jinping and the actual speeches that he's been making in recent years, some of those speeches were kept secret for years, but have dribbled out in Chinese language, theoretical journals and things like that. You find that the guidance that he is giving to the 95 million members of the Chinese Communist Party that rule China, uh, he's, not, he, he's not concerned with growth of the Chinese economy. He's concerned with uh, political consolidation of power, uh, centralizing the party's control over the economy, including over private companies. That's why we've seen this destruction of value in Chinese private uh, and you know, publicly listed companies over the last couple of years. And it looks like that's going to continue. Economic growth, uh, further uh, trade with the world are, are, are distant second or third uh, tier priorities for this leadership. He is about politics. He's about ideology. He's about exploiting what he calls the, the uh, greatest opportunity in a century to exploit chaos in Europe uh, and, uh, and uh, the things that Russia is doing uh, to try to expand an empire uh, into Eastern Europe.